It has been over a year since we bought this flat, so I'm gonna go through my experience and how I'm finding living in a shared ownership flat. So starting off with the pros, I still love the way this looks. It's so new, it's so clean. Um, I'm one of those people that likes the look of like new modern houses. I don't like the, the old cozy look. So yeah, I just can't get over how, for me, aesthetically pleasing this flat is. Another pro and the biggest pro that I've said before as well is still the location. I love how close it is to the station. It's so close to my mum and yeah, this is the ideal and dream location for me. So that's something that I was willing to pay more for. Another pro is that we've had no issues with any appliances. So all of our kitchen appliances are working perfectly. Uh, we've had no issues with, I don't know, the water, plumbing, whatever it may be. We've had no issues. We've never had to call anyone and ask them to come and fix any of those things. The only one thing that we did get fixed was one of our kitchen cupboards, like the door um, just came off the hinge. Well, it kind of came off the hinge. So we emailed and chased them up and were able to fix that. Another pro is our neighbors. They are all so lovely. Uh, we say hi to everyone, we get along with everyone. And yeah, we've not had any issues with everyone. What I found is in our flat, it's mainly couples like us that live together. So it's all quite young people, but not too young and like noisy or anything like that. Just kind of the same as us. So just working couples that, you know, are finally on the property ladder and yeah, it's pretty much the same situation for most of the people living in this flat and yeah I really like it there is one family that lives here and they are so cute they have the cutest little children and yeah they're not noisy at all um I've had no issues with noise or anything like that everyone's really quiet or maybe the soundproofing is just really good I'm not sure but yeah it's just a really peaceful nice location so now moving on to the cons parking can be a bit of a problem because I bought a flat without parking. Well, this flat, I didn't have the option to buy parking for this. If I did, I would have bought it. There is a lot of off-street parking, but as time goes on, you do get lazy and you want to park right by the flat. And there is like a, a road right by the flat, which is free, you can park, but there are also houses on this road. So they also park there. So sometimes it's a bit of a competition to see who can get there first. And like, yeah, there's not been any actual issues, but yeah, sometimes people park badly on purpose so that your car doesn't fit and like little things like that um but that's not people in the flat that's actually the people that live in the houses you know, we have so much off street parking so it's not an issue but i would say if you have the opportunity to buy a flat with parking i would recommend that even if there's lots of off street parking because it just saves you the hassle of fighting for a parking spot another con is how much you have to chase the housing association for something to get done they are not rapid in their response at all like their customer service is good in terms of they will pick up the phone and all of that stuff but for example we had to get our kitchen cupboard fixed it came off the hinge a little bit so we had to email we had to call and yeah it took them quite a long time to come and fix it um so yeah sometimes you do just have to be a karen and nag them until they get something done so yeah overall in this year i've not faced any big cons or anything like that i know some people they've had horror stories and really bad experiences with appliances breaking and loads of snags that they've had to have fixed and all of that. But I think our housing association, the people that built the flats, it's just very high quality. We've not had any issues, so very lucky. And obviously all new build flats do come with a one year warranty. So if anything does break, you can just call them or email them and they will send someone out. So yeah, that's good. Now let's talk about the service charge and rent and how much that's increased by. So. Previously, I was paying this much, whereas now they have changed it a year on because of the retail price index and every year it changes. So these are the new figures. So rent has gone up to this. Service charge actually has gone down by quite a bit to this. And I'm so surprised that in total it has gone down slightly because I don't know, I just expected the service charge to not reduce that much. So yeah, I'm really glad because service charge is a lot more reasonable now. So yeah, really happy about that. If I was going to staircase to 100%, then that rent increase wouldn't even affect me. So now let's talk about staircasing. One of the most controversial things when I bought this flat was the fact that I only bought 25% and everyone was like, you only own 25%, that's nothing. You don't own the flat, da da da. I can staircase to 100% right now if I wanted to. When I bought this flat, I only had a salary of 33,000. 440 and if you've seen my salary video i'll link it here and in the description box below um, i'm on a lot more now because i'm qualified yeah, i can buy this flat 100 percent, but i'm choosing not to because we are actually in a position where we can start looking at houses my partner and i's careers and salaries have progressed a lot quicker than i expected when i moved into this flat 
I didn't think we would be earning this much and we'd be eligible to buy a house. So now I'm stuck because I don't know whether to staircase this flat and then live here for another year and then buy a house or just keep saving and buy a house, I don't know, maybe at the end of this year or early next year. So yeah, I just don't know. I'm confused. I don't know. So I just want a bit of time to think and decide. So that's why I'm not staircasing because obviously once you staircase to 100%, if I was going to sell the flat, it is a lot harder to sell. Whereas if you only own 25%, it's a lot easier to sell. So that's why I'm just waiting it out, thinking about what to do. Um, if you've got any advice, then leave it down below because yeah, it'll be nice to hear what you guys think as well. For example, if we were going to buy a 500,000 pound house, that's a 50K deposit, so 25K each. But then because I've lost my first time buyer status, I would also have to pay, or we would also have to pay stamp duty. So obviously if I sold this flat, I'd get the 22K deposit back, or most of it at least, if the price of the property hasn't gone down that much. So it would be a lot easier. So I think it just depends on if we find a house and when we buy the house, if we're buying it, I don't know, by the end of this year or early next year, then I would probably sell this flat and then just take my deposit out and use that for the home. Whereas if we decide to stay in this flat for another two years, then of course I'd be able to keep this flat and still buy a house. So it just depends. I'm just giving it time. I'm not rushing things. Overall, I feel like shared ownership will work for certain types of people, not everyone. For us, it's worked perfectly because we live in a one bed flat. In total, our expenses are not that high, especially when we split it. So monthly for us, after we split it, it's only about 750 each or around about that. So not that much. Whereas obviously if I was paying for it all on my own and living on my own, then I wouldn't have got this to begin with. I think a one bed flat is only worth it if you have a partner that you live with and you can split everything. Or I would say get a two bed flat and sublet one of your rooms. You do have to check with your housing provider to see if you're allowed to sublet. Not every association is okay with subletting, but our one is. Um, our neighbor who lives above us, she has a two bed flat and she's subletting and she's making bank from that one room. She's able to pay her mortgage and everything, most of it, from just subletting this one room. If I was single, I would have bought a two bed flat and then sublet one of the rooms. But because I'm in a relationship, I got really lucky. One bed flat was enough for us. It's even cheaper and it's more than big enough for us and we've saved even more money. So yeah, no regrets. Um, I've definitely saved a lot more money by buying this flat and paying part rent, part mortgage than if we had just rented somewhere else. So we would have still paid for a nice flat and that would have been even more expensive than what we're paying now. So you just have to assess your situation and it's really important to plan and especially have an exit plan. Do you want to keep your flat? Do you want to staircase? Are you just doing this temporarily? Like you need to ask yourself these questions and know what your plan is before you buy the flat. So yeah, that has been my experience with shared ownership. I've not had any major issues and especially now as the service charge has gone down by so much, I'm really happy about that. Overall, I still think if you can afford to buy a freehold home, then of course try and do that. But if you're in a position where, you know, you're young, you're not on like the highest salary, then starting off with a shared ownership isn't so bad. I don't think it's as bad as people make out to be, especially if you will have career progression and salary progression. I don't know if shared ownership is right for people that won't have that because then you'll just be trapped with 25% and rent will keep increasing. And long term, I just don't think that would work out. But if you're a person that, you know, salary wise, you will progress and you'll be in a position where you can easily staircase to 100%, then I would say it is a good scheme for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.